Welcome everybody back to the Lost Beat 6 show. Glad to have you in. We're happy you're here. We got a great show for you today. Kim ZB is our guest today and she's part of the Making the Scene deep dive exploration and celebration of the planet's scene from Los Angeles. And she is uh, probably one of the most responsible people for this show existing for this, not this pod, but this for this this series existing because she is the she is the principal photographer for everybody in this scene so you'll see her watermark on almost all these photos um half the almost all the photos i've used so far have been from her she might be one of the premier uh music photographers in the los angeles area she's worked with uh she's worked with the record company van halen the janks uh david lee roth and, and and among among many many others and we had a great time having her on before we get to that show i wanted to say thank you for all the people that went out and supported us on Bandcamp friday this past friday we have a new album from big die volume one and sparrow uh david sparrow released um some exclusive uh sort of demos and and things like that and some of his early some early uh promo or early demo works and some like a live a live uh session or two so we're really happy you came out and helped us out with that that means a lot to us um we are about three quarters we're about halfway done with the show this this mini series uh on planets and it's uh we're about halfway my three quarters of the way done with the with the interviews and it's been a wonderful experience i really can't wait to share the rest of this stuff with you and uh um i've been in talks with um uh, mr stillwell and uh uh about what we're going to do to sort of cap off this project that we're doing and then you know send this podcast forward because you know, this has been a great, you know, this has been a, a great vehicle to meet everybody. And, uh, I want to continue it. I want to continue this pod, this specific podcast <laughs> on Mondays to be a vehicle to meet new people. And so I'm really excited about the future about that. And, uh, we will be continuing our beef sessions on Fridays and our exclusive interviews when we have new art, uh, when, we, when our artists and when Lost Beat 6 has something to share um musically or otherwise we'll have our own in we'll, we'll have um my good friend mr terry gross to help us with our our um, in-house interviews and things like that but uh i can't think of anything more to say and if i do i'll just tweet it or text it or whatever you'll find out and um i hope you enjoy uh my chat with kim it was it was really great there's some some really great little nuggets in there i think uh I, I have to, I have a fondness for the Muppets and we talked about that a little bit. We brought in a little Muppet, um, not to tease it, but, but there's some, some fun stories from the road. Um, you know, some Muppet comparisons and, um, uh, just another perspective from, um, from someone who is, you know, makes a living documenting and preserving, these memories so i will um i will stop talking and we'll uh, get on with the show all right let's get started mm -hmm. thank you for thank you kim for coming on the show sure thanks for, thanks for me thanks for making the scene as we're calling it now <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if maybe you are aware, but how how important you are to the entire this project existing and the the project you know this I don't know if you know this how this has come about, but basically this this does not really happen without um, mostly most of your your photography and your video shooting, Aww. just because of the the, st the the streams that have come in. Um, that inspired me to do this show and, Aww, and meet everybody. So you're welcome, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, uh, and, and I think, I, I think, um, I'm not sure. I think Jeff mentioned it, that that was sort of an emotional moment where, you know, the, you're, there's been montages of your, of your footage. 
Yeah, yeah, and, that was that was really sweet of him. I really, uh, it's it's uh, as a photographer of the scene in general. Oops, sorry, my alarm just went off. Oh, um, as a as a photographer in the scene in general, we're kind of like the music photographers are a little bit of the unsung heroes of the music scene, where like all the memories are made and like all the shows are captured through us, but we're very like very rarely ever seen in those photographs. Like, you know, like we basically don't exist on film. Right. And I think we're easy to forget because we're just kind of in the background, like, you know, flies on a wall sort of situation. So it's nice when somebody actually gives a little shout out. It feels good. Yeah, and and most of the the photos that I've received from from Stilly to use are mostly yours, and they're really fantastic. So, oh, okay. uh, kudos again. Thank you so much for for helping me put this all together. And so, let's just get a little bit of your background and um, how you became a, a photographer and how are you a transplant or are, are you? I'm a transplant. <laughs> yeah, not, I should have asked that. I'm sorry. That's that sounds awkward. Are you a transplant? <laughs> I, but it seems like there's a here. trend. I'm not from here. No, I actually, um, I grew up in Wisconsin, so okay, another northerner, um, in Milwaukee, and actually didn't move out to LA till a little bit later than I think most. But um, I basically moved here. I think this is my 15th year in LA. Um, okay, and. Um, I've been a photographer my entire life, like since I was a kid, I, I had a camera, um, and I'm just the type of person that always has a camera with me kind of wherever I go. And, um, I started meeting people, um, in the LA music scene. So I had gone to, I kind of gone to a couple small shows like way back, like when I first moved here, but it all really started when I made friends with a band called the record company. And through them kind of met almost everybody else. So through them met the Jenks and, you know, through the Jenks met planets and um, it kind of just like, you know, grew from there. So, um, yeah. So I just kind of had always loved live music and um, I just kind of, because I always had my camera there, I just kind of started doing it more and more and then started shooting for um, high voltage and then, um, uh, a little bit for LA record and a bunch for uh, grimy goods and then eventually a bit for um, buzz bands. So, um, you know, before in the before times, before, <laughs> uh, I was out shooting shows like multiple times, like if not like five to six days a week, sometimes multiple, multiple shows in a night. So, um, you know, when the pandemic hit, it was, a really nice break to begin with because okay. <laughs> I was like, I was working a lot besides like maintaining, you know, a day job because shooting small bands and small venues, uh, really not the best way to make a living. So, um, so yeah, so I had been really, really kind of burning the candle at both ends and now it, it feels weird. I'm like, I don't know, I'm totally like little house on the pairing it. I'm like making cookies other <laughs> creative outlets for the time being um I, I this is a more of a personal question do you have like do you have sort of influences to run off of like a jim marshall or a henry diltz or, um uh, i n not really to, to be honest i've met a couple i actually met jim marshall um before he died um he was i used to work at sammy's camera um, okay. and basically the main one on fairfax so we saw anybody and everybody and um sammy has a huge collection um of jim marshall prints that uh used to hang up in the hallway um him and um oh i'm forgetting his name um herman i forget his, his last name actually his, the other guy's son used to work with me um as well and they're both really well-known music photographers and i went to um a jim marshall um photo show um and you know i had friends that were friends with him and that kind of thing but um i yeah i don't i didn't really have specifically someone that i looked up to when it came to shooting music i basically 
went into it with the idea that um, I know how hard it is to live a creative life. I actually moved out to LA initially because I'd gone to school for painting and I wanted to be somewhere where there was a, a bit more of an art scene. And, um, you know, it's hard. You give up, you sacrifice a lot to have a creative life or to pursue like creative endeavors. And so for me, photographing these bands was more of like, like the one, like I had this philosophy that, you know, you should support what you want to see more of in the world. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I was able to do that really didn't cost me anything but time that could help support other people that were also trying to pursue these create these creative um, lifestyles and, you know, felt like I could really make a difference as far as, you know, getting band seen. And, you know, I'm like, I just want to go to see a show um, again, if, if it ever happen again. <laughs> One of the things I would tell people, like a lot of times band get, bands get really discouraged when there's like, Nobody at a show. I can't tell you how many times I've shot. Oh yeah, you know shows that nobody shows up for, and I'm like, it doesn't matter that nobody's here. If you give me a good show, I will make people wish that they were here, and like, and they'll be at your next show. Like that type of idea, you know. Like, and I've had like one of my one of the the saddest shows I ever shot was actually at the Malibu Inn with the record company. It was the Malibu Inn was shutting down. It was our last show ever, and the record company I believe was closing out the night. But the venue ran out of booze at like eight because it was oh, literally no. their last night. So like what they had was what they had and that was going to be it. So there was literally nobody there by the end of the night because like <laughs> the bar was closed. There was literally nothing left to drink. And so they played to essentially an empty room. But it was one of the most special shows that I've ever been to. And like Chris, who's the lead singer for them, like did a little tribute at the end of like he played Goodnight Irene. And it was just like, so touching and so beautiful and one of the shots that i took that night actually ended up on one of their album covers and it's just like you just never know like what a show is going to be and i love shooting these tiny little special moments um because you know if a band does take off they're really fleeting like the record company really took off in the last couple of years mm -hmm. and they were a band that i was like I'm going to miss these shows where you have to convince the audience to pay attention to you. You know, like there's something really special in that. Like there's something really magical in these smaller shows and planets is a perfect example of that. They're, you know, when you talk about the planets community, like um, I met them like the summer that preceded their residency um, at the satellite. And those that month at the satellite, like our friend group, grew exponentially you know mm -hmm. and it was just all word of mouth of people like you have to come see this show like it's incredible and that was really rad to see like how that type of energy grows i've been asking everybody this what what do you think is the um pun intended the gravitational pull of <laughs> the planet's crew because i think there's something that everybody everybody seems to have the same sort of um sort of uh like cult openness like <laughs> but in a, in a really awesome way <laughs> yeah yeah I think. um i think it's silly you know like if if planets is cult like like silly is the 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 head of that you know what what do you call it? the guru or whatever it is the, um, I, i'm i'm referring to say charles manson i'm really trying not to say <laughs> yeah i mean i'm sure he wouldn't mind the charles manson but he also would t completely not ad admit to it at all but sure, sure. um he is a really special person. He just, um, he's very, he's just a natural leader and people just kind of gravitate towards him. He always seems to have like, he's like a reluctant captain, if you will. Like he in no I get way that. Yeah. has yeah. ever commanded the attention. Um, although I tease him all the time because it almost he'll kill me for saying this it almost never fails that if you're sitting in a group of people with silly like silly will sit at the highest position in the room it's really funny <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, he's com it's completely so like not a conscious thing that he does but like a as a person that takes photos and like notices like positioning and stuff right. just, like, it's, it's hilarious to me that's um, fantastic <laughs> yeah he just is like he's just got this natural leadership ability but it's wild because he has asked me 
um, you know, for photos and videos and all kinds of stuff. And he's like, he always asks for favors in a a way that he feels he completely doesn't deserve them. You know, he's like, if it's okay, if it's all right, if you have time, no big deal. If you don't, but it'd be really cool if you could do this for me or, you know, it's just like, you know, we really want you to be a part of this sort of thing. Um, and like I've watched, you know, him as a movie director, I've like been on set with him as he's directed and he's kind of the same way. It's a very giving sort of ask where um, he's inviting, you know, other people's opinions. He's giving you ways out if you feel like you don't or you're not capable of doing it. And it's just a, a very endearing way that he always kind of um, reaches out to people um, and makes them feel like, you know, they're important and, um he values what they're bringing to the table essentially. So I think that's the kind of the natural draw there, but you know, the, the group on a whole is just pretty, um, you know, straightforward, um, you know, genuine people. Nobody's really putting on airs. So it makes falling into the group really easy. So yeah, I've noticed that, um, and and maybe that there's that sort of band of outsiders vibe about mm-hmm. that that I really kind of dig. Yeah, um, and maybe that be that could and then, and that might have been why I've been asking. You know, I I've started up front with the uh, transplant question because yeah, it seems I, that I complete okay. My bit my the way I view the planet's crew is 100 percent the Muppet Show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're hitting a soft spot with me right there. That's that's uh, I'm I'm so, I I've been like minorly like like in in uh, I've been on a little bit of a minor like Jim Henson. Uh, uh, <laughs> it run. is it is that vibe. Like if if Stilly could buy an old theater and have everybody live in it, like it would 100 percent be the Muppet Show, and it would yeah, yeah like everything like that is like the ideal planets venue sort of situation. You know, I, I like it. I mean, there, you got your Kermit. Yeah, um, obviously. <laughs> who's uh, we? We should uh, just, uh, now we got I've now already, we got to do this I'm, now. I'm pretty sure Nathaniel's like Fozzie Bear. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, they have Nick as Scooter, obviously. <laughs> 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 yeah, it gets it's, a little uh, more it, vague from there. But I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go on a glimpse saying Cotton is Rolf. Is no, that, Cotton is it, no? Rolf. Yeah, or possibly Gonzo. Okay. Okay. He's a little bit out there on a different plane, you know. He's always like his whole dreamscape sort of situation happening, perhaps. Um, we got D Dubs, maybe Sweetums. He's really tall, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I might be a Stoltler Waldorf in the song. <laughs> I'm just grumpy sound man over here. <laughs> 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 this is great. Um, um, who takes Miss Piggy? That's a tough one. You know, the problem with the Muppets is there's really enough lady, there's not enough lady representation. You basically have Janice and Miss Piggy, and there's not, like, they, they, they're two completely opposite people, so, like, I feel, I feel like JoLynn and Emily might fall into, like, the, is it Janice or Janet? I forget. Janice. Oh, right? oh, uh, Janice. Yeah, the, bass, the the guitar player. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And then like, but Miss yeah. Piggy, I don't know. We don't have a lot of like. Just, you know what? You and me, you just put it Zach in there. And you'll be fine. Make, <laughs> make it Zach. It'll be good. You know what? That could he work. won't mind. He won't mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although him and Dylan could also be like Bunsen and Beaker, but. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic! I'm really, I'm also really excited. The uh, for once Disney's Disney's going to put out the uh, the Muppet Show. I this, know. this is the time of this recording. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, um, I'm excited as well. We actually, me and my roommate have been. She's been trying to buy a house on Joshua Tree in the last, like our last soundtrack through, um, through Joshua Tree was the entire Disney movie, the Muppet movie nice. soundtrack. <laughs> um, I've ended more than one planet's. Um, uh, you know, montage with the lovers, the dreamers. So, oh, Rainbow Connection. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um that one gets me every time. Mm-hmm. So, I think uh um, and then I think the uh the few the memorial 
uh, this, oh, one, yeah. this one person believes in you. I'm like, <sighs> yeah. yeah. So that, yeah. That's, but that's, yeah. that is completely the planet's mentality. For it's, sure. It's the Muppet yeah. show. So that's great. I, this is, <laughs> I'm so happy you said that. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I might need to reset, maybe reset for a minute here. This is this is great. Um, okay, just on a on a technical level, when you were when because uh, you you've, the uh, the shows that were shot and documented, the Troubadour, some of the satellite shows, the Dark City, at the Silverlight Lounge. You know, you, you have mm-hmm. um, um, you have the were those because uh, you're you're credited as being you know shooting that stuff with um, yeah. dubs with some of the extra. Um, footage mm-hmm. uh, uh, everything was but that? the Troubadour I was not sadly I just missed the Troubadour show by like a okay. week I like met them like a week later and I saw a picture of oh, the really? Troubadour show and I has okay. never been more mad about missing a show <laughs> I did notice that like the some of the credits on that were like I was expecting everything to be ZB images yeah and those were somebody else and like oh, yeah those were Ed <laughs> I'd love to give you those credits, but I can't. I um, but uh, okay, so everything else. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Literally everything else. <laughs> everything else. Um, were some of those shows that I know um, uh, Stilly told Dubs, asked Dubs to kind of shoot some stuff. Did he? Did he actually? To, did he ask you to film film it or or still use stills? Um, I know everything that I did for them. Oh, I just went to sleep. Um, everything I did for them was on my own volition, really. Um, I think there was only one show that still specifically wanted captured, maybe two. I know, I think the Nirvana tribute that we all did was that um, I was in cahoots with them. But, and there was one other show that um, they had um, our friend. Um, God, I just forgot his name. Trevor, I believe his name is Trevor or Travis. I get those names and my brain confused all the time. Um, anyways, he was doing um, a reel-to-reel recording of it. Um, and that we specifically filmed. Um, but everything else, I was just always at shows and kind of like chose on my own, like what I was going to film and what I wasn't going to film. And what I was shooting and shooting video at the same time. Um so there'd be like a song that I would like, you know, say the dubs like, "Hey, let's do, let's do these two songs," and you know, we just kind of coordinate that way. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if that was something you were using stills from the video or Mm-mm. not. No, okay. they're actual stills. Okay, great. There's a there's a lot of great moments that you've you've captured between performances and the sort of after performances. There's a lot of great you know, there's a lot of great shots. Uh, and candid, they're not, they're, none of them are none of them are really posed. Yeah. Um, um, is, there, is there any that sort of stick out to you? Do you pre- do you prefer your your sort of um, performance to non uh, to sort of? Um, I don't know. Sure? There's a few. I mean, I really like shooting Stilly as a lead guy, just because he's vo- very photogenic, and there's the way that their shows work. Um, you know, their live shows are just so full of so much visual imagery that, um, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's just fun to shoot them. Um, there's actually a bunch of footage from a short tour that we did that really hasn't made it out, um, in a, in a finished form yet. Um, the, like we basically went up, um, through, um, where was it? Shit. Well, we did San Francisco and then, um, oh, Santa Cruz as well, um, and did a couple shows that way. So there's a there's a tour video that really only the inner crew has seen. It hasn't been refined at all. Oh. Um, that has a lot of my favorite stuff in it. Um, but I like doing it both. I I um, because I do shoot a lot of shows. Um, I I love shooting live music, but I think that they're really is something special about capturing um the moments that not everybody gets to see you know the behind the scenes sort of stuff um Mm -hmm. just the hangouts and um it's really where like so many of people's like real memories of the friend group come from so um 
Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm a person that really loves documenting things and um, it, you know, it, it took a minute for everybody to kind of be comfortable with the fact that, you know, they might be photographed all the time. I mean, most of them are performers, so they don't really mind right. having the camera around them too much. But um, I think now that, you know, we have, you know, getting, getting, you know, at least five years, if not more than that of, you know, these, these friend groups and people coming and going and, you know, moving away or, you know, what have you, like, it's really nice to have, these things to look back on, you know, there are things that maybe people don't appreciate in the moment, but, um, you know, just not planets related, but just in, you know, shooting other stuff. Like I've had things where people have died that, you know, now I have like their last performance on film and that type of thing. So, you know, mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen with people. And, um, it was such a, it's, it's such a magical time, especially, you know, last couple of years have been such a magical time for everybody. Um, it just felt like it was important to kind of document um, that time period, if not for any other reason, just for us, because it's it's a great thing to look back on, you know. Yeah, and it, it sort of got me thinking. Um, I don't know if you've, you've heard this, and I can't, I wish I could um, quote who wrote this, but basically it was sort of an essay on... on um, Kind of, it was. It was not necessarily the a positive light on photography in general. Basically, the idea that you t you can distort memories easier, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm not sure that. I mean, if that if that is true, I think it distorts in the positive. If that's if it, if anything, how that yeah, was. I, can't, I, you know. I mean, I definitely think that our. You know, if you think back on the memories you have as a kid, a lot of them are tied to photographs that you have, mm -hmm. like. Like photos are a huge, you know, they, they reinforce that connection in your brain. So it's like, it's there, you know? And um, I think that having those triggers for people um, to, to remember those times is, is really important. I don't, I, I mean, I guess if you're, you know, if you're, um, if you're really going through and like, you know, today's Instagram where people only post the best parts of their lives, you know, like that's something yeah. different, but, um, I, I'm pretty much just laying it out there how it is. So I'm not, I'm not offering like, um, a, a positive or a negative True. on it. I just yeah. feel like I'm like, like, this is what happened. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. That's, that's, um, you know, there's, there's only one way to, there's only how many ways to yeah. frame it a certain like way. Or... Like making like, Sh like I said, shows look better than maybe they necessarily were. Like I do try to make sure everybody looks like a rock star and you know, that there's nobody's looking weird or you, know, <laughs> you don't see just an empty space in front of them. Ever playing, you know? Like, yeah. you know, I, am, I am for, for, for my more professional work and like the show stuff, there definitely is a, a bit of an illusion happening as far as like, you know, I consider my work, you know, a advertising for the band. So like my, it was awesome. You were like, like I said, like when I saw photos for the Troubadour, I was so sad that it wasn't there. I was like, <laughs> no. You got that. You, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw that. I saw the very next, I think they played the Troubadour one weekend and then Silver Lake Lounge the next. And the Silver Lake Lounge show was the first show that I had seen them. Um, Zach Samad actually was like, you should really come and see these friends of mine. I'm, in, I'm playing with this band. Like they're really cool. I think you'd really like them. I was like, okay. It was on my birthday. It was on um, my birthday that I went oh. to see them. Now is that was that Dark City? That was the, um, the packed I house. Was, it was yeah. It was okay. packed. Like I couldn't move. I was stuck on the side, and I was just like. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that bar more packed. I've shot a lot. I, of yeah, there. yeah. I think that was. I, I keep looking at that. I'm going, that sounds, and I'm, I'm, um, I've kind of realized that I'm not a crowd person. Yeah. And, and my sort of, um, and I'm not sure if I'm, it's just me being like, in, you know, uh, sort of one that's likes exclusivity, but where, or I can get a reach on something. For example, like most of the time, if I'm at a show working, it's on, it's on the wing of a stage mm -hmm. or if it's in the front of house where I have, separation yeah <laughs> and a good little, listening spot your own little area nice. yeah and i go into it but if i'm rolling into the crowds i i hate it it's it's sort of like a strange and I, I think i told jeff about this the woodstock thing um 
where it's like, yeah, I don't want to be in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get very claustrophobic in crowds, which is yeah. ironic. Like, I, if they're, man, photo pits, my godsend. I love them. <laughs> like, you know, if there's right, yeah. shows that don't have them, and I shoot a lot of shows that don't have photo pits, like, the only thing that really saves me is the fact that I'm not paying attention to what's happening behind me. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I can sometimes feel how packed it is, but I'm not, like, physically stuck in it, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's I, I it's weird because I'm at all these shows, but I'm always right up front, so I don't really have to experience the crowd portion of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember being at a King, the first time I saw King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard play in Los Angeles. I don't, do you, uh, mm-hmm. do you, um was at the palladium oh, and wow. i didn't know what I, I didn't know what i was getting into <laughs> yeah and my friends rough. and i we, yeah and, and i i got on i kind of got into them because they were into this sort of you know sort of prog rocky sort of yeah i saw them play stuff. i shot them at the troubadour uh, a while back oh man um that must have been uh when was that <laughs> i don't know what is time oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> it's, it's obvious. Twenty twenty. <laughs> every every year they come back, they're playing bigger and bigger places. So, um, yeah. but I, this the story kind of culminates with me kind of going into not realizing I'm at a punk rock show <laughs> and not expecting to be at a punk rock show. Yeah. And we're at the front, you know, towards the front, and I'm realizing that I'm in a uh, I'm going to be moshed, and I'm not one to get. Moshed. I'm I'm the beard stroking, sit in the corner, view the scene, view the yeah. show, get into it. Um, if I'm not working it, of course. But um, I remember running up to the the mezzanine as fast as I could. <laughs> yeah, it is punk shows in particular. As a photographer, I try not to shoot a lot of punk shows because I'm like. I have a lot of gear that's worth a lot yeah. of money. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it, it literally gets dangerous. But I was shooting a few. I have a an old roommate of mine was in the band. Um, his his stepdad is one of the original members of the Dills, and they did a reunion thing. So I was shooting a bunch of punk, like punk stuff. And, man, I was like, first three songs or get what I need. And then I'm like, and now I'll go shoot from the back. Because, like, <laughs> it, it's violent. <laughs> like, you know, like. Choose that, but even then, oh god, who was I shooting? Idols, I think, at um, the Will Turn. I was up, like, I wasn't even in the photo pit. I was like, I'm just gonna. I got there early enough that I was able to stand like right behind the rail where they let all the photographers go. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna stay here. It's right next to where I'd be anyways, and at least like I have a spot to shoot from. And I was getting squashed. Like there's like there was not only a mosh pit happening in the pit itself, but there was a mosh pit happening on the second level where I was. And I was just oh like, Oh my god. I was like, no. <laughs> <You know, laughs> Try not to get kicked in the head. And it's hard when you're shooting because I have such tunnel vision that I can't right, I right. can't know when things are coming at me. So it, you're just kind of like randomly getting shoved and like face the camera and yeah, it's not fun. Do you have a do you have a, pre- a pref- preferential angle or a, a, an image that you pre- you like to capture? Like for example, if the bass player has got a certain like torque. Mm, not necessarily. I just kind of um, I'm just always looking for you know getting lights in the right spot and you know making like I said making sure people look cool and um, literally every show is different. There's like even shooting at the same venue. You know, like I can get a, I have a general idea how things are going to be, but, um, you know, it's, it's different every time I go, you know, I just kind of, it's more of a matter of like trying to, trying to get a good spot in general. And then, um, it helps if, what helps way more is if I've shot a band multiple times. So I kind of know like how their set runs and like, like I said, like the record company was a band that I shot a million times. Planet was a band I shot a million times. Um, I went on tour with Miyabi, who's this great guitarist from Japan. And like, there were just certain moments. I'm like, okay, they're going to, he's going to jump at this point or mm-hmm. the drummer is going to stand up at this point. And like knowing when those moments were about to happen so I can anticipate them easier, um, you know, makes things. Those are moments that I'm always trying to capture that I like moments that I know are going to look cool on, on camera. But, um, 
but a lot of times it's just kind of like knowing how things work and just being able like seeing enough shows that I can kind of anticipate when people are going to do cool stuff. <laughs> That's great. Do you have a, uh, a favorite venue that you liked working in? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me try. And this, this could be anything too. This could be from like, you know, I think did you did you went with uh, the record company to New York right when they were doing their their promotion? I did. Well, we I wasn't. So that's what, I missed that. So that, that, me and the record company have ended up in the same place at the same time multiple times. Like it happened. Um, <laughs> the New York trip happened to be. I was actually in New York with David Lee Roth and shooting for him like the same week that the record company was there with all their shows, and I was like, well, this is interesting. And my friend Zach Kibbe was there, and technically the Zmeds were there, although I didn't know until it was like too late. So I, they were the only people I didn't get to see. I was like, is everybody from Los Angeles that I know here right now? It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> so I was in New York shooting for Dave, and it just so happened that by time the record company shows are happening, like they were playing um, Rough Trade, the Colbert show, and um, the Bowery, uh, Bowery Ballroom. And it just so happened that like, Dave didn't like was like tired of shooting by then, so he's like, "Yeah, go do what you want." I was like, "Cool." <laughs> but the same thing happened. Like, I went to Austin to shoot. Um, I'm friends with this band called The Sonics, which is like one of the OG um, uh, garage rock band. Like, they inspired a ton of punk bands. And I <laughs> had told them about how I had missed shooting uh, um, Robert Plant. Um, because my friend Kelly gave me a weed candy <laughs> way too stone to function. Um, and, uh, at bottle rock with the record company actually. And so I told them the sad story about how like I wanted, like I needed redemption and it turned out that they were going on tour with Robert plant and they're like, come out any of the dates, like, come on out. And I was like, cool. I've never been to Austin. I'll come to Austin. It happened to be unbeknownst to me during South by Southwest Oh no! Uh, and and I got I literally like traded my soul for plane tickets and a place to stay. I was staying with Cotton's mom in Austin. It was really oh. sweet. <laughs> she was adorable. She like made me toast and like oil in the morning so I could take it with me. Um, and you know, and the, and the Sonics managers, yeah, it's cool. You're going to be able to, you know, where it's Austin City limits, you're going to be able to go. Maybe even on stage, you can go. There's no three song limit. It's going to be awesome. I'm like, cool. This is really rad. And they're like, and then when Robert comes out, you got to put your camera away because he's not allowing photographers. So I was like, no! <laughs> oh, that was. A <laughs> and I like died a little bit on the inside, but you know, I was like front row to see Robert Plant. So I was going to go back. Right, and then yeah. I came to Royal Seco, and I was like, awesome. Third time's a charm. It's going to happen. I'm going to shoot Robert Plant and I, um, we got our press credentials and then a week later was told that I did not have a photo credential. Oh no. <laughs> so I could go cause I had press, but I had no photo. So I ended up buying like a really great point and shooting, just shooting from the crowd. And I was like, I will shoot you. <laughs> I had to like hold my way to the front. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I got a great shot of him. So I was happy. I felt content. <laughs> That's good. And the cool thing is, is I think that happened to me with the Zemeds too in in Vegas, not in not in New York. New York's cooler because that's just sort of like one three thousand miles, yeah, and two large. It's still a large city, so you can you never know who you can run into. Yeah. Um, I always kind of like that. The Kings of Leon show. Pardon? Were you with the Zemeds at the Kings of Leon show? No, I was. I was. Uh, this is. This is. Hap this happened two years. No, it's coming on two years. It happened late twenty nineteen. Oh, okay, so I was already at the. Oh, yeah, we were. Okay. We were. They. They were doing the Everly Brothers. Uh, uh, they were mm -hmm. doing a show in Vegas, and I was doing a show in Vegas with uh, my touring group, and um, uh, it just so happened I found out. This is. This is one of those like you know I, my 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 buddy is is a. Uh, pretty much does not like you know he doesn't find anything useful about uh social media <laughs> but it just so happened that i caught that um i saw burley's instagram about driving out to vegas and i'm like oh wait hey are you guys in oh i'm in vegas i was actually right. in Anderson. but you know like, hey uh and i had to make sure my 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 the show that i i do is uh uh is more um is, is not a long one. It's about a 90 minute set at most. And, mm -hmm. and my gear all gets into a van 
<laughs> within like 30 minutes. It's really nice. Um, so I ended up paying like, I ended up seeing, um, I think Cotton was there too. And mm-hmm. so was, um, was Bert there? I don't think Bert was there. I, I wish Bert was there. Just not, not that I didn't like anybody else, but it's like Bert's just a sweetheart. So. He's such a sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen uh, him forever. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'll be, he'll be on the show too, for sure. Um, but anyway, that kind of, you know, Hey, it's just the kind of, and it was, it was one of those cool moments where no one had anything else to do. We all finished our show so we could all just kind of decompress together, which nice. is really cool. Yeah. Uh, but I like your New York one better. Cause that's, in New York is I just like New York better, so <laughs> it was so random. Yeah, it was just like the yeah. perfect timing of just everything. It's happened to me in New York with them, Austin and Milwaukee. All like just like me randomly showing. It's like it looks like I'm on tour with them, and I'm just I'm just happen to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, but you know, it's funny because you talk about like packing up all your stuff and having it like you know all fit in a van. Like it's really funny when we went on tour with Planets because there were. Um, I think a total of 18 of us on tour. Wow. Yeah. It was like three car loads and, and like Stilly's big van was just packed to the gills. And um, yeah, talk about not being <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> How was the, I can imagine the, uh, that's a lot. I mean, I, I can't imagine that was like the, the cheapest um, it on. was actually really cheap because we camped the first night when we were in Santa Cruz. Okay. Um, and that was wild. We were like up like right. Our campsite was like right next to the ocean. So like there's amazing footage of like video of Stilly. We were, it was like one in the morning. We went down to the ocean and Stilly was down there first. And you just hear him yelling, you know, <laughs> like, the way Stilly, like you can, like if you're ever lost, just like listen for Stilly and you will find your way to wherever the group is. Like he's so loud and oh like he's yelling. Ah! And it turned out that there was like, he had went to go take a pee in the ocean or something. And there was a sea lion right there. And he was like <laughs> trying to talk to the sea lion and like have a conversation. <laughs> There's this whole he tells the whole story. I have it all on video and it's That's great. hilarious. It's so uh, great. Um, so we came well, the first night and then the second night or the next two nights, I think um, Cotton is friends with, um, oh shoot. What's the guy's name? I'm so terrible with names. What's the guy from Pineapple Express? That's not Seth Rogen. <laughs> uh, Dave Franco. Yes. So his, his brother, Tom, I think. Or, uh, Wait, well, sorry. He has uh, three brothers, and one of them is the non-actor one. I believe. Oh, it's okay. Tom. So I, the one that's not uh, uh, Dave Dave Franco is is out. I know I know more because of Alison Brie than anything else. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the well, third, there's, there's a third they're, Franco. They're interchangeable. They're like all. The, they basically are all the same guy. They just like have different names for some just reason. Just like Andrew Wilson and the with the yeah. Wilson brothers. Yeah. Um. So Con's friends with him, and he had like this space literally just kind of a, a a storefront that had nothing in it that he had that like is like a creative space for him that he was letting us stay at and um oh man we got in there and like we were just all gonna be basically camping on the floor and we had been told though that there was gonna be a shower and a bathroom and blah 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 and we we're like cool and that this one guy who lived there was gonna let us in and kind of show us around and we weren't getting in till after a show so we didn't get in till like one in the morning or something ridiculous and so the guy was a very unenthusiastic about even like letting us in so he like lets us into this big room and he's like okay this is the room and then the the bathroom is right here and it's literally in the same like just big empty room there's a toilet with a curtain and we're like wait what (laughs) (laughs) this is not okay we are friends but we are not this friendly. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we're like, we were told that there would be a shower and a proper bathroom. And he's like, oh, he told you about that? And we're like, yeah. And so there was another bathroom. So none of us actually had to use the bathroom just with everybody else. <laughs> would yeah. like, we would have all been a lot. If we got close. We would have been a lot closer. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah. So we actually had pretty much just free accommodation the entire time. It was just a matter of getting people places. Nice. Yeah, I actually haven't heard any of these stories yet. This is fantastic. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I, yeah, I, I knew about the road trip a little bit, but not not uh, 
we didn't, you know, no shower, no group shower was were mentioned because obviously they didn't happen. Yeah. But <laughs> um, actually, that that your Robert Plant story kind of uh, prompted a question I had. Um, there's a lot of groups. Uh, um, there's certain groups that have a have a no photo policy, and there's a lot of groups that have a completely all in photo policy. They have like there's like you get like uh, you know between like uh, there's like uh, like Godspeed you Black Emperor, uh, mm-hmm. G- Grateful Dead sort of tears of like just take whatever you want, man. This is it's all do whatever, it's you, almost, want, yeah. do whatever you want. You can bootleg it. We don't care. Um, right. And you get like a. I remember going to a Neutral Milk Hotel show when Jeff was back. Jeff Mangum was back doing doing shows, and it was very like don't take photos. You know, like I, I'm not sure why. Like to the point where like they played the Hollywood Bowl, and the jumbotrons are dark, and, which oh, is cool, wow. but. But um, because you can sort of focus on the show, but you're still getting a delayed response from being up where you were in the amphitheater. Yeah, um, I mean, for the people in the back, you know, <laughs> especially the Hollywood Bowl, like, right. like I guess there's a show happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a little, it's not as you know, uh, if this was the Greek theater, we'd probably have different stories. It's a little more intimate. Yeah, a little more. A little more, but um, I. W- do you do you uh, what's your take on uh, I, I mean, being that you're you're a photographer you're probably leaning towards that but do you have a do you have a an, an issue with um, the no photo okay. policy? Um, I mean the I I am generally so busy that if it's a no photo policy I'm I'm just not going to it. Um, but it's it kind of depends on the band. Um, like and like what the whole purpose is what people are doing for it like um you know sometimes it makes a lot of sense sometimes it's kind of ridiculous like especially when venues like there's there's in general like the rules of photography of music photography is that you have the first three rule where you're going to be in the, the pit or you're going to be able to shoot photos for like the first three songs and then you know you leave or you go if you have an all access pass to go backstage or what have you hmm. um if it's what's really frustrating is when it's a very tiny little venue that also decides for some reason they want to have a first three and they don't have a photo pit. And you're just like, I'm stuck here in the front row with my camera gear. What difference is it going to make if I'm holding up to my face or not? You know, it's like, it's stuff like that. That's really annoying. Or there was a yeah. few, um, there's a few venues. There's two in particular that have tried to charge photographers um, to shoot. And like, I get it. Like you don't want people shooting videos without, you know, you know, like using your venue to shoot a video without like, right. a cut of it. Yeah. But um, for me, like the photo stuff, it's, you know, it's hit or miss whether or not I'm getting paid to be there or not. Like if I'm shooting for, um, one of the blogs, like most of them don't pay anything. It's just, I get to get into a show for free and like have oh. photographs that are mine and maybe someday yeah. they'll be worth something. Um, if I'm shooting for a band, it's a little bit of a different story, Okay. but, um, but if I'm shooting for a band, it doesn't matter. Like I'll have all access in it. Like, you know, I'll just be like, no, all access. Sorry. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> the <door I> want. <laughs> um, but if it's, you know, if it's a tiny little venue that, you're essentially like, I'm essentially giving you free PR. I'm giving you shots that are going to help promote your space and show that you have cool bands. Like you're going to, you're going to try to charge me to do that. Like, no, yeah, no. you know, so I'm a little uh, bummed about the blogs, not paying you either. Cause that's, that seems like there should be enough in the budget to get a photographer out there, you know, like, or pay for the photo. Right. Yeah. Cause you're paying yeah. for, you know, yeah, I mean, like, there, technically- there's, a, there's a couple of them that will, but for the most part, I mean, even something like you get it in, you know, you know, you get it into an actual like magazine, like it barely pays anything, you know, like you're maybe getting like 200 bucks. Like for me, the, for me, I actually, the only way I'm really making money is if a band hires me to come out and shoot them. Um, or if something's going on, like, merch or an album cover or something like that okay is there like a, a royalty or a flat rate license or a 
Um, not really. It, there are different levels to it, but it kind of depends on the band. Like, um, when I'm when I was shooting for Van Halen, like they they basically paid me enough that I don't own the rights to any of those images. Like they're right. just all yeah. the ones. Like yeah, right. Like, like pay, I would think a right to uh, work for hire. Or, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. They're just yeah. like we're gonna pay you this amount of money, and I'm like, that's fine. Here are your photos. Right. You know? <laughs> um, and but, puts puts, a, puts Van Halen on your resume is like ah, check yeah, mark. Yeah, got right. that. That's, you know, that's good. Right. Yeah, and then um, which ironically they were the first band I ever shot a video of <laughs> for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had been shooting. I've been like David's um, photographer for a while. Like I had basically been tutoring all of his assistants how to shoot because he wanted someone around him to be able to shoot whenever. And um, they asked me if I wanted to come this one day to the to the Roxy to do this thing. And I was like, "What thing?" And they're like, "Just it's just a, it's a thing." And I was like, mm. "I'm being very secretive <laughs> about it." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> And it turned out to be a Van Halen video. And I was like, oh, and they're like, um, could you just come and help us shoot on stage? And I'm like, um, I don't really not, I don't really shoot video. <laughs> Look, I'm, still <laughs> I'm like, I get the principle of it. I know how to do it. It's just not right. something that's on my resume. And they're like, Oh, it'll be fine. And I was like, okay. And now like their tattoo video, you can actually see me shooting in it. It's really bizarre. Oh, um, nice. The Let's entire day, out. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I went as- assuming that I was going to be yelled at and sent home, but. It actually turned out to be really fun and we were there for like four days or something wild. And now that Eddie has gone, I really feel like, you know, it was a really special time because I got to spend a lot of time with them. So it was cool. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, um, I think we're almost about, we're just about done. I think, uh, we'll, we'll cap it off with a, um, um, I'm, I'm going to be ripping off, uh, Jill Lynn's, uh, where do we get back here? How do we get back here? <laughs> but what, what I think, uh, but for the most part, I usually try to keep it optimistic of what you're looking, mo- uh, what you're most looking forward to when, when things, uh, uh, kind of get back to, uh, things stabilize a bit. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just, I'll, I'm going to be very curious to see, um, like who's stuck it out or, you know, how things are, are changing who's you know you know the the scene in general changes every couple of years in general you know there's kind of these cycles that will go through where you know you'll be seeing all the same bands all the time on the local scene and then they either kind of start breaking out and making it or they just kind of start breaking up and not making it mm-hmm. and um i think having this year off people are either you know sticking it out and making, you know, working on albums or what have you. Um, or they're maybe realizing that they want to do something else. And it's going to be really interesting to see who's left standing, what venues are left standing. Cause yeah. there's a lot, you know, on satellite clothes. That was, that was one of my favorites just to hang out at. And um, I was really disappointed when they closed um, and there's just so many little places that, you know, who knows who's going to survive. And I'm really curious to see what new DIY venues pop up. And um, because before it happened, like there were so many new venues coming up. It was such an exciting time. There were like, you know, it was one of the few cities that was opening up music venues, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and now it's like all these things that had just gotten like roots you know had to shut down and so i don't know you know but it'll be great to see people again and to you know to be able to uh to document the the new the new world as it as it comes up um but yeah i don't know it's it's going to be interesting i think that um it's it's not going to be the same (laughs) it's going to be something different so it'll be interesting to see what that what that is and um, if I still fit into it, you know, so. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, that was a little bummer right at the end. A little bit, yeah. But, great. But, <laughs> no. was, you know, it's just weird because, you know, I, it, being out of, like, I'm already, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I already hang out with people that are younger than me. And um, it's just weird having been out of the scene for, like, 
a year. I'm like, is everybody going to come back and they're all going to be 22? And I'm going to be like, who are you people? You know, they'll yeah, be like, yeah. you're the old lady at the show. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it'll be. Uh, I, I I I I think it'll. I'm hoping that there's a nice like cathartic break once in a while. Like when we kind of, uh, at least emotionally, it'll be really nice to see. For for you know, me, it'll be nice to meet people that I've been yeah. talking to, and I've well, met certain like, people before. It's just but, gonna be nice to like all have um a shared trauma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like we've all, like we've all, it's, it's a connecting force that we've all been like, well, that was weird, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right, weird. right. <laughs> my, my cousin had this great phrase, though, so, you know, great times, let's not do it again. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. It was awesome to it was awesome to have you on the show. Um, and and I thought this was I thought this went really well. At this uh, okay. being so many so many insights on it. and even even um, things that I'm learning. Even like the first three uh, rule of three was kind of interesting. It yeah. makes sense. Uh, once again, thank you so much, and uh, I hope everything uh, goes well. Oh yeah, you too. Thanks for uh, thanks for the chat. <laughs> you got it.